Good evening to tonight's reading. Um, it's the Readings in Contemporary Poetry series at DIA Chelsea. And this series initially ran under the direction of Bridget Mullins from 1987 to 2003. So it's a long-standing program that we hold dear to DIA's tradition. Uh, today, the Readings in Contemporary Poetry is co-curated by Vincent Katz and Jasmine Raymond, DIA's curator. And it attempts to chart a series of lineages, um, con combining different poets from varying uh, generations and infusing the series with new voices and work. The Readings and Contemporary Poetry series at DIA Chelsea is supported in part with public funds from New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. And we would like to also extend a warm welcome to Amalia Dayan and Adam Lindemann, Barbara and Charles Wright, and an anonymous donor for their generous support of the program. Thank you as well to Brooklyn Brewery for their complimentary beverages. And finally, I would like to thank the poets, Ann Waldman and Leanne Brown, for their kind acceptance to be part of this series, as well as to John Sprague, Patrick Heilman, Rebecca Rice, Carrie David, and Sarah Kovac for their kind help with the coordination of this program. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vincent Katz, who will provide an introduction for the poets this evening. Thanks again. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. So we have um, really excited about this reading tonight, pairing Leanne Brown and Ann Waldman. Leanne will read first, take a short break, and then Ann Waldman will read. Leanne Brown was born on October 11th, 1963, in Saitama Prefecture, on the outskirts of Tokyo at Johnson Air Base. She grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina with a couple of years in Heilbronn, Germany. She received a BA in Women's Studies and American and English Literature from Brown University in 1987 and an MFA in Poetry from Brown in 1993. She's the founding editor of Tender Buttons Books and the author of the books Polyverse from Sun and Moon and The Sleep That Changed Everything from Wesleyan. And she, we just found out that she received the Fence Modern Poets Series Prize for her book In the Laurels Caught, which will be published soon. And that is to be the first installment of a multi-book project called NC Ode. A child of schools and tales out of school, Leanne Brown comes from a languagey approach to text, though always with a specifically playful cadence. As she made plain in an early poem, quote, words weren't enough for her. She often made high cat cries and danced hard on the blue carpet, quote. Sexual politics dance hard with conceptual hijinks in her poems. Particular details of lives, at times far from the cultural spotlight, which of course makes them culturally relevant, leaven the stew, as in her ballad, she sings to the little animals on her bed. Brown relies on a collage of voices, friends, colleagues, lovers, fellow travelers, poets, or those suffused by poetry. Collaborations and quotes, references, reverences, fill her pages, so much so that one is charmed by her deferences, combined as they are with palpable ambition for poetry's possibility. Leanne Brown's poetry makes a living pact between desire and document, and it is always a pleasure to hear her voice. Please help me welcome Leanne Brown to Dia. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I'm really excited to be reading here. Um, I wanted to start with the short sequence of very short poems that I wrote when I first moved to Chelsea, which was about 10 years ago. Um, and I had a little baby at that time, who's now nine. So this is Choppers Over Chelsea. Tondo, head 
turned three-quarter, alert to coincidence, not stopping for pizza or sugar of any kind. Filthy taxi. The taxis of New York are clean because of the filthy taxi car wash in Chelsea. Full moon. Just miss it behind a building, rushing with the stroller through the cold, then remember I can see it from my window. Eclipse. The moon blobs out like an egg white or clear sclera of an eye. Next, reddish lantern tint, then a manta ray of birds silently blocks the light. Harmonic concordance. Strangely, baby cries whenever we say, "Om." Is she trying to say it too? Choppers over Chelsea is a title worthy of its own poem, but why are they always here? It's enough to make one go conspiracy theory. Baby's first art show. A line of TV monitors and a man's tongue touching the floor over and over like the legs of a caterpillar. Baby's second art show. Also a monitor, two baby feet, soul to soul, a blue jewel held between them. Soundtrack, lullabies from many languages. La Gaman, where I was first in labor and the cappuccino machine goes and baby does too. Gustin show. Tony was standing in the corner next to the portrait of Morton Feldman. I am married to lima bean head. <laughs> so um, this is just a new poem that's coming out in an um, ICA, um, Institute for Contemporary Art in Boston catalog about color. Different poets were asked to write about specific colors and I said, I want magenta. So that's my favorite color. So this is magenta. Um, the show's up right now in Boston. Um, magnetic, in broad strokes. My freak out color occurs in nature, darker than fuchsia, brighter than pokeberry, the middle abstraction in children meeting. Instances of magenta on rue magenta, named after a very bloody battle, though blood is not magenta, with a sample of dyed silk from the spirit duplicator Serendipitous, also known as Tyrian purple, as mauvine, iodine. My mind vibrates at a higher register when I see magenta, whether from murex or mix dyed in the wool, C-M-Y-K. Magenta is the new black. I recommend magenta. A definitive five-star color. Not much magenta in daily life. A punctuation. Oh, there's a bag in the window. Those baseball caps are more hot pink. A gentle magnet drawing the eye to a higher place, the top chakra over your skull, not touching but still part of you, hovering over ultraviolet manganese. How it all got started? The color change is irreversible. This color purple is an unnatural disaster. Two girls wearing magenta, the Magna Carta, walk in together and promptly fall asleep. Are there magenta leaves? Once you notice it, it's all over. And um, I've done this really ballsy thing of trying to rewrite Shakespeare's sonnets, and I've barely begun. I know a lot of people are doing that nowadays, but I'm going to read you some of mine. I have called them sonics, because some of them are about the sound. And I have a few um, little Quotes. Some of them are Shakespeare sonnets, and then I do my own thing, too. So I'm going to read some sonnets. And I, of course, published Bernadette Mayer's sonnets um, about 20 years ago. And it was very inspiring to ask me to start a magazine. I said, oh, no, I want to start a press. So I started Tinder Buttons Press and published Bernadette Mayer's sonnets. And I've always wanted to write my own book of sonnets, so I'm working on it. So I'm going to read some of those. So these are sonics. And there's a few epigraphs. Um, Charles North said at the Poetry Project reading he did, when I hear holy sonnet... I always think, holy sonnet, Batman. <laughs> and he also said from one of his poems, 48 epigrams, a Shakespearean sonnet couldn't keep me from you. <laughs> and Anne Walden said, what is the arrogance of an Anglophone, em Anglophone empire? So this the sound. This is sonnet one, the, from fairest creatures we desire increase, one of the 
procreation sonnets. Everybody wants to make babies with the hottest beauties so that Rose will never die. Seeing that women at full bloom are on the brink of seed, men want some child to hold up their memory. What all eyes see belongs to them alone. Stop fanning the flames of all your flaws, creating lack where true multiplicity lies. You're acting as your own worst enemy. You, now Earth's Christmas decoration. You, the early sign of tinsel spring. Within your own hidden bud, satisfaction. And tender girl, you're wasting it by being selfish. Feel sorry for the world, serve it up. Don't risk the grave, it's time. And here's the other, uh, not sonnet two, the other procreation sonnet. 50 is the new 40, so I must be only 38. I can get rid of those lines, said the Botox clinician. So can I, my sister outlaw said, lowering her brow. I don't wear juicy couture, look good in jeans anyhow. If someone asked me, who's that pretty woman in that photo? And where are those legendary afternoons while the way in bed? I'll tell them, you're looking at her, even if my under eye shadows are as dark as my mother's are now. I'm not ashamed nor stingy with stories of my past wildness. How much more praise your beauty will have when you can finally answer, that's my child over there. All past hurts and pleasures tallied up, swept away, his or her beauty beyond compare. You'll feel better, more alive when you're waxing old, a blood rose blooming in you when, like today, it's so damn cold. And this is um, sonnet CXXX, so it looks like sex. It's the one, um, my mistress says eyes are nothing like the sun, that one. <laughs> that Harriet Mellon did such a good job on Dim Lady, but I did. My crush's eyes do beam blue and blind me like the sun. Corals are far harder than her hips, her thighs caught, never gave Snow White a chance, you dwarves. Why are her breasts so done up? If hair be wired, hers is lit from within, apples, and I've never seen any roses as red as rose red, her beast. But no, I cannot even dream of her cheeks tonight, and in Deneuve's Chanel is more delight than in Catherine's cabinet where old perfumes do be. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that her written hand far surpasses even that orality. I allow I never saw this goddess go so low, so, mister, when she walls up, she treads in Brooklyn, where in my mind I still dwell on Hope Street, but rarely, rarely do I even go there. <laughs> Here's my son at 56, which, as you know, Paul Hoover just did a book of all um, like, what, like two, 250 or so versions of Sonnet 56 in different, different styles called Sonnet 56. And my, this is my Sonnet 56. Sweet love, keep getting stronger. Don't say to me your straight razor should be any different from hunger. Just because we ate heaven today together, we'll both be feeling that sharp knife tomorrow. So love, be here now with me. Although you fill your hungry eyes until they squint through slits, tomorrow you'll be wide-eyed in search of food. Don't kill love's spirit with a stomach dullness forever. Let this sad intermission be like the sea with beaches on either side, that when they view you, love again, you who are my vision, will be ever more psychedelically blessed. Else, might as well just call it winter, being such a drag. It makes summers coming in three times more ecstatic. Rare. I'm timing myself. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a, a Halloween sonnet. Another Halloween, and the spirits are about to cross the street, roving with Tan Lin, the interlocutor of space and time appropriation, all overseen by a huge transparent eyeball floating down Sixth Avenue on which is projected various innocent eyes of locals large and small. My daughter's eyes are smudged round with darkness, rubbing off from powdered hair, black being a vampiress after doing karate, and Lily is an angel, half good, half bad, with a ring drawn around her eye. Like the dog on Little Rascals, also known as Petey, the dog with a ring around his eye, which was incidentally drawn by Max Factor, the man who lived before global collapse, as books are now questioned.
There's another sonnet to fall. This is sonnet 73, the one that starts that, that time of year that might in me behold. That one about. I stole some of the lines. You'll recognize it. But sonnet to fall. Autumn is when you might see me age, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang. It's my birthday, by the way, where all the sweet girls sang. Out the back window, still green the willow, choir practice over, and I mean forever. In me you see the bluest hour of the last slant of sunlight up 22nd Street. Sideways, illumination, scribbled chalk drawing on vivid, hallowing night. The rain takes it all away. Death's better half in costume on the steps. Burning men of such a fire, eaten up by richest dinners. My friend who's dead, you're not here to see the fall, but I walk fresh into evening's rain, still mine to love. And I want to read a little bit from um, my Zuccotti sonnets. <laughs> I just did a, I just, I would go down there and just um, sort of like a, a journal journal sonnet sequence to the Zuccotti Park. So these are for Stephen, wherever you are. Wait, I hear you. My new housemate. Zuccotti Sonnets, one. I always yearned for a, a communal adventure. I wouldn't have missed the party for anything. Today, an Occupy Wall Street librarian named Bill or William expanded my definition of anthology. Anthos, Legere, I knew as a gathering of flowers with their anthers cross-pollinating each other in the bouquet. Leisure, together, we are a bunch. But I didn't think of the connection of Legere and Logos as in word or thought, as in ology, so knowing as, a, knowing as a gathering of words. No acronyms, please, but Occupy Wall Street Library, or OWSL, written on the spines of the books, looks like a slightly deranged or rearranged owl, or the name Owlsley Brown, who Nick said is so deep right now, even his secretary can't reach him now that his father has died. His secretary can't reach him now that his father has died, but soon he must emerge as the man of the family. It's huge, Will Oldham said about it in a brief conversation after his amazing show on the island, where even though the sound was not fit for lyric exactitude, the upside being I could go more deeply than the ground bass of the music headlong on the balcony, our children curled in the corner on blankets. Neologisms of the square include sloating or loading slowly. Today I ran into Jean Valentine and another poet there. The library is getting to be one of those places where if you sit long enough, everyone in the world will pass by if it can stay there long enough, which they and we are determined to help do, quote, till hell freezes over. Said one headline and my favorite, make out, not war. Said one headline and my favorite, make out, not war. I forgot to tell you about the dream I had where Owsley was a good knight from the west charging into battle against the popes and cokes from the east trying to buy North Carolina. We are not for sale. And they clash over the Blue Ridge with Bonnie Prince Billy being their bard, documenting it all in ludic balladry and also blaring a call to arms. There was actual armor in this dream. I'll have to consult my notes lying around the house, which I am now not in, but where I have the majority of my dreams. What's that Schuyler line about dreams with their burden of sleep or the other way around, which is, of course, Shakespeare? Anything goes in poetry, I mean dreams, allowing me to actually write with the, about the disturbing image, allowing me to actually write about the disturbing image, yet thoroughly fascinating real dream instance of going down a would-be girlfriend's double-headed member, and yes, I do mean cockatrice. See, I still can't bear to say it. Now, what can that mean beside that I asked my subconscious for a dream worthy of offering up for analysis to the Jungian dream worker on the mountain after I gave her a copy of The Sleep That Changed Everything, which is something, by the way, I still yearn for every night. So I want these sonnets to be a kind of log of moments around my observation and hopeful participation in Zuccotti Park, instigated by the truly provocative statement by May May Bersenbrug that she had been out of touch with the disenfranchised for so long, it felt like heroin going down there. And my second visit did give me that feeling. It felt like heroin going down, and my second visit did give me a, slightened, a heightened sense of awareness as I walked away, seeing things as truly anew, like the Taz Cafe on the way back to lunch duty at the Blue School. It's like that email heading for the Fixers Collective Bring your broken stuff and learn. And Jimmy Schuyler saying, 
baby, I am the garbage. The more I get to sleep, the more I get to wake up and write about waking with the cl closest that I can get to an uncluttered to-do list of daily pressing exigency. Though, as Tony says, why do we have to run around so much in our dreams? We're busy enough as it is. So these dreams keep shouting out in public space, even when I try to write, try and write about historical moments, such as this sonnet turning into Liberty Square. Such as this sonnet trying to turn into Liberty Square, my friend Robert told me, Mr. Zuccotti said, at least now people finally know how to spell my name. The other element, of course, is the Shakespeare-rific and how it interplays with the way I might feel love, like weather, remembering, recording, and imagining, pushes and touches, photos of you, wonderful nerves, so wonderful to see you after all this time. If light were music, what waves would bring you here to me? What am I afraid of something happening or not, but without speaking of it, nothing would fail? Drums and minor notes, fabulous harmonies, mothered arms holding me and launching off now. I am the mother wanting you all to do well. I am the mother wanting you all to do well. Urgent action required. Real people appear to me in the hallway. The librarian I hoped would sleep even longer has awoken and descending to the park after alerts that p police have taken the library again. We watch video, black, yellow, and red leaves of jackets in the inky black, so he just grabs more books from our recovered stash and heads off into the night. Patty Smith, another mother, sends an empowered message, do what you want, keep going, or rest, get your health back, then regroup when it's warm. The morning of the raid, Tony sits at the edge of my bed, gently waking me with the, with the park has been cleared, and so strange that I dreamed of a bridegroom surrounded by rattlesnakes, woken up from unusual hibernation, threat or a long hidden power come to light, like when we drew the solar system around the planet out front last night, the base of which was the sun. Emma Goldman said we need food, clothing, shelter, and enough left over for a book and a flower, the coming society, a book dumpster dived by Amy Goodman, the Holy Bible with pink temper paint splashed on it, and the mud-spattered Verdi's Requiem are all books in this people's library. Bernadette is braiding the revolution into conversation after Thanksgiving dinner with the librarians of Occupy Wall Street and Bill's new Out of Zuccotti Park endlessly rocking. I just lost a version of this poem, so I'm rebuilding it from the ground up like they and we are doing to the People's Library. It keeps coming back stronger, even though cops were heard joking about throwing bodies into the dumpsters along with their tents, and I flashed back on the terrible wrenching of waking for years from love's labors lost, out with the old habits and with the new people who never ate Thanksgiving dinner before ate it with us. And Miranda made fabulous place cards, complete with new names anagrammatically inside them, Mine is Enelan. Julie, who didn't make it tonight, is Uliege. Max is Zam. And Miranda is Iardnam. When we were talking Utopia and Kropotkin, I actually got an email asking me to be on a radio show to talk about Bernadette's tragedy, tragic poem with Ann Waldman and another poet as yet to be determined. And I thought, who better than Bernadette herself to also talk about her variations of Emma Lazarus's poem? I make more money than I ever had, and I was more in debt than ever, and it stayed that way, not for the lack of trying out utopian ideas. Abu Farnham is making an open source map of utopian sites. I wonder anew about what these portals should be called. Samuel Delaney says heterotopias, meaning different sites of pleasure. We are all living on borrowed time. Abu wants to study paradise. What about polytopias, as in many places, or even paratopias, where paradise could manifest, even if only for a brief autonomous moment, but we still have to love, to live. A lifetime risk screens Leo as she and he make 3D printed images of the extracted tumor, one manifesting them as jewelry, organically formed, and bronze art that sticks out. We are all a cancer in that cancer is defined as cells growing out of check. Is there a reason everything is speeding up and slowing down at the same time now here at the end of this Mayan-marked millennium? Is it a coincidence that I and everyone seem in the eye of a giant spring of energy winding up and ready to release to some new mode of slow protest? Clockwork ticking toward what sort of time's up clockwork? 
When I first moved to New York City 25 years ago, the upside down martini glasses were everywhere drawn on the walls, parties over, and giant aliens all among Basquiat's shadowed forms on walls. My George Melier was Harry Smith recording Stephen at Allen's table, the sound of pencil scoring music paper framed as music itself. John Cage laughing uptown under a newly blooming dogwood branch and a very tall Watusi taken to the funeral home across the street. Mafia men play mahjong at the corner under a front called Coffee and Dolls, whereupon I saw my first murdered body under a sheet. But I digress. We made sure the party was not over, at least for us. And now New York City is getting exciting again. I misread Stephen J. Boyer's button, which says, not over as hot lover because of the way his lapel lay. And I said, I bet you are. Earlier upon the malefaction of Giuliani's Manhattan, Hal Wilner said, I didn't move here because it was safe. So that's just an excerpt from that long sonnet sequence about Zuccotti. I want to um, save time for a little tiny coda. Because this is like a gallery. We hang our paintings on the wall, right? <laughs> Um, uh, this, I'm just going to read three poems to close, and um, I'm working on uh, just sort of a, every time it's the solstice or an equinox, I'm shifting gears a little bit. I try to write on those days, I try to explore those days of the solar year. So I just wanted to read um, first uh, Acoustic Winter, which I just wrote this past solstice. Acoustic winter. If the year ends a plural spiral, make it be so what a year is. If the winter begins again here in the longest, darkest place of the shortest, bluest day, we play the stillness deep into the night song beside all our sleeping family. Breath. Of the five friends I am holding, who will last the winter in their earthly spiral, in their spring trajectory, move to lovely summer, one more lovely summer, or further time to foil, days whirl into nights. I move to see my parents, the ones who have borne me, have borne me up. I move to be with my sister and her local love, her ones. I move to join the circle, I am already in my kith. Acoustic winter sings a summer, a way to stay awake as the light brings back its basket, its halo, its wreath of line and berries. Pine hurries to the wind again. Night is here at its most clear. Sound across the zones a weave. I sing this song again for winter. May Venus never sever her move across the sun to come upon the next transit, the next music, in time to finger to find the new way to unwind, skeins of sound in mind. Garden for Stacy and Julie. I lost the letter I wrote in the garden. It kept falling out of the Arabic notebook. Where is that notebook with its lattice-like weave, white and gold? Between houses is the garden. Deeper into the walled garden, the courtyard with packed earth and bird noises and the smile of someone I don't yet know. My daughter learned a new word yesterday, ineffable. So I now say ineffable and vines in the corners where one can hide. Another friend said the children are planting the garden together. Another she told me you said my children are my chemo. And now hesitant to see even me meaning you and who deeper into the garden unknown always here. The letter mainly said how I cannot imagine what you must be feeling and that it is raining at night on the mountain. And I'm up thinking of you and how much we all love each other in our seemingly various ways. But that underneath it all, there is this big love river that streams under and over everything. And it is akin to that river of poetry I sometimes forget is even there. Every day, if we dare, our endless numbered days. And if we don't, that part of the river is gone, but keeps going. The form of the ladle or vessel is the form of the writing. And sometimes it's a very big form, like a sieve or screen, that drips through but still catches the rain before it goes up again, imaginable how it does, quietly, 
you definitely said those things about the garden, so I'll talk about the river, and those words are in me now. It's for Stacy Doris and Julie Reagan. And um, my last piece I'm going to do is Equinox Hymn. It's written during a rainstorm early morning, Friday, September 17th. And, uh, as you know from other readings, if you've seen me read, I like to refigure hymns and ballads, so it's one of those. It's to the tune of, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. But it's not about Jesus. I'll hail the power of equinox, earth, water, air, and fire. The noon sun beams his blessings down to wed him. We aspire. The full moon beams her blessings down to wed her. We aspire. All rocks, all trees, all waterfalls, all passion flowers in light. Bring forth your flowery diadems and crown us day and night. All hail the power of equinox now, day and night are one. All hail the power of equinox now, day and night are one. The orbits of all heavenly spheres, all planets, stars, and sun. The orbits of all heavenly spheres are balanced now as one. Thank you. It's a, it's a great, great pleasure for me to introduce Ann Waldman. And in fact, I'm only partially responsible for this introduction. I'm, with Ann's blessing, I'm going to read her own biography that she sent me. I changed the, all the I's to she's. And then I have a couple of my own additional comments. Ann Waldman, in her own words, was conceived on the 4th of July, 1945, before her father took off from Fort Bragg to Germany. Her parents were on 47 McDougall Street, Greenwich Village, where Anne grew up and continues to live in NYC. She went to public schools and to Friends Seminary and then Bennington College, where she got a BA in literature in 1966. She made it out to the Berkeley Poetry Conference in the summer of 1965 while still an undergrad and heard and met Olson, Duncan, Dorn, Ginsburg, Lenore Kandel et al. She co-founded Angel Hair Magazine and Books with Lewis Warsh and was the editor of Silo Mag at Bennington, 1965 to 66, which published Stan Brackage, Robert Kelly, Alain Robrier, and others. She took a vow at Berkeley to help create this kind of vital poetics environment and to include more women and diversity in the mix. And she took a vow to cultural activism. Frank O'Hara told her to come and work at MoMA as a volunteer, but she could not afford to, alas. <laughs> and then, almost immediately, she was hired as assistant director at the newly forming Poetry Project in 1966. She worked there over a decade, and within that time frame, founded with Allen Ginsberg and Diane De Prima, the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics program at Naropa University in Boulder, Colorado, where she is still a core faculty member and artistic director of the summer writing program. What is remarkable about Ann Waldman's poetry is how she has maintained her voice through relentless permutations, a classic and perhaps ultimate, in our age at least, shapeshifter, 
She has moved from clear daily poems of a young person to the glamorous full tilt performer as Fast Speaking Woman, the title of her 1975 City Lights book, to investigator documenter of cultural situations in an incantatory ritualistic experiential set of modes that almost always includes performative elements. She has often collaborated with dancers and musicians, but also with visual artists and with other poets. I love the plain talk and open book quality of her early poems. And I think it's important to recall poems like Giant Night, which tell of her interior New York City life while we are experiencing her more recent battle-inflected work. Waldman is the, the author of numerous books, too many to name, you can look them up, several of them in the Penguin Poets series. In 2009's Manatee Humanity from Penguin, Waldman's poetry reaches a fever pitch of experimental poetics called into play to deal with, to come to terms with, to do battle with one of the many egregious failures of the human race to act with responsibility and humility. Visually and sonically, the text ranges from full page blocks to centered strands. In one section, simultaneous texts in different fonts parallel each other down the page. In 2011, Coffeehouse Press published the Yovis Trilogy, Colors in the Mechanism of Concealment. At 1,009 pages, it feels just right. <laughs> really, it fits, fits in your hand so perfectly. The Yovis Trilogy makes clear Waldman's commitment to the Shambhala concept of being a warrior in the world. Instead of passively bemoaning the entrenched state of human affairs or endlessly trying to escape from it, in this epic, Waldman confronts history and the present, and particularly the male-centric nature of that history, in a series of incantations and spells replete with collaged elements, demonstrating her central position in a lineage of modern epic poets, including Pound, Olson, and William Carlos Williams, whose epic Patterson made such brilliant use of collage technique. Waldman, too, encompasses multitudes as letters and other texts permeate her thriving ocean of engagement. Throughout it all, she manages to retain vestiges of the girl's voice with which she began this journey. We're very happy tonight that Anne will be joined by cellist Ha Young Kim. Born in Seoul, Korea, Ha Young Kim is a composer and improviser who has performed Balinese gamelan music studied Carnatic music, and has worked with, among others, Meredith Monk, Cecil Taylor, John Zorn, Christian Wolf, the Kronos Quartet, Evan Zaporin, Alvin Lucier, and Elliot Sharp. Ms. Kim has been an artist in residence at Issue Project Room and at numerous universities and colleges in the US and Europe. Ama, a CD of her own compositions, is available from Zorn's Sadiq label. Currently, she is preparing releases of her music for several labels, and in the fall, Jack Quartet will perform and record her 40-minute work, Thread Sons. Please help me in welcoming Ann Waldman and Ha Young Kim to Dia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vincent, and it's such an honor to be part of this illustrious series at DIA, and thank you all for coming, and uh, wonderful to be able to work with Haiyang, Haiyang this evening. And, uh, but I wanted to start with a little sonnet. After Sir Philip, Philip Sidney, I will read to Leanne, and wonderful to read with Leanne. She's got my heart, and I've got hers. It was fair, we fell in love. I hold hers precious, and mine she would miss. There never was anything like this. Her heart in my brain keeps us one. My heart in her guides thoughts and feelings. She loves my heart, for once it was hers. I love hers because it lived in me. I once wounded her, it was misunderstanding, and then my heart hurt for her heart, for as for me on her, her hurt did sit, so I felt still in me her hurt, hurt. It both of us hurt simultaneously, and then I saw how we're stuck with each other's hearts now. <laughs> So 
so I wanted to dedicate this reading to Stacy Doris, re recently passed away, and also to Akila Oliver. Uh, this is her death day. Uh, she died a year ago. Uh, official day was February 23rd. Um, many of you in this room knew her, a wonderful poet, a wonderful thinker, a close, close colleague. I had known her, her a number of years. She had come to Naropa on a scholarship during one of the summers and ended up staying and moving to Colorado and lived there with her son. And um, she was really a, a sister in many, many ways. So this was a um, piece I composed after her death. But I'm going to be joined with Haiyang. It's just called Chumshyan Morning Song. And now the words, and now the words. I'm grieving all by myself, all by myself, and then with others. She's alone on the bed, dead in her clench, without all warning. And now the words, and now the words. I am grieving, and now the words. I, I, ki, 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 la, la, la. Ah, ki, 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 la, la, la. Keel, even keel, keel over and on. What's meaning? What's the meaning of all I'm? What am I saying of all the meaning? What am I saying? What in the world hears the death of a poet? because poets never die. That what they say up in heaven is and below in hell, poets never die. I'll force the river to run upstream. I'll force the sun to go out. The stars will shatter and fall down from their spheres. Then we will know a poet never dies. Me, sick at heart, and others crying on their sleeves. Everything dark in her bardo, where she moves, keep it moving, inside their hearts, heart of us, crying on each other, crying on the time, time stops, and there's a clench without warning, to do what I can't do, do, undo, undo, to do what I can't. Undo, do, do, undo. Ah, ki, 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 la, 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 can't do. Take her back to soothe, and then we would laugh. Little woman at the corner of the sky, all lit up with life for nothing but laugh like a girl, nothing. Little child in the sky waiting. I'm down, down like the rest of you. Why talk, and now the words, why talk you? The child is waiting. Will come, come, will you come? Ah, ki, 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 to make her spirit dance. I say this costly lament. What does it cost to lament a poet? Cost is inestimable. There's nothing to equal it. And poets teach how to lament. A whole life away from you. Watched it grow cut short. Watched it grow cut short. <laughs> this song of moaning. Sing your name, Akila. Akila, she was a one, she was a one, she was a one, she was a one, she as a one, she was a one, she as a one, she was a one. A ki 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 la 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 So a little bit from the uh, Manatee Humanity Project, uh, which I've been working on in various permutations with Ambrose Bai, my son who's a composer, and with Haiyang. So uh, a little bit of, from that. Was living, panting like a frighted wolf and howling, 
effort lay in us before religion at pond bottom. Nearly two million years ago, bones complicate the quest for lineage cave shaft near Johannesburg 1.95 million years ago, a new pre-human Australopithecus sediba. Lurga songs are received by the mermaid dreamings who live in billybongs. Out and starts the mermaiden with a fan into her hand. Keep up your hearts, my merry men, for you're near the dry land. Out and spake Earl Patrick Graham with a soft tear in his e. Now sin we've seen the mermaiden, dry land will never see. Stealth bombings, ghost shrouds, the manatee is found in slow moving rivers. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays. The manatee is a migratory animal. Both by kin of this action, left hand lifts kind palm open, hand free for greater locomotion out on the open savanna, slope of beckoning, New swing, turn, grab a kindred object, how you feel, attraction, hold, offer, a mandible heart. Cross-dressed body puts on syncretic pelt and moves as in a plucky mating dance, stabs at promise, tongue word, stand up looking eye to eye, my grip around your legs. Footprints at Laetoli, three Australopithecines crossed a carpet of fresh volcanic ash, walking much as we do in two-legged gait. Hip and leg gone much the way toward human form in place of what in apes suits them for swinging. Through trees, scamper on all fours across a line that leads to man. What else? Then someone else for them covers you with a one could take something out and move other utensils around and will he have her, will he have her, will he hold her, will he have her drop by drop, secrets of battle drop by drop, crouched in dirt now terrified, she does no slaughter, childhood fear, fear of slaughter, fear of animal, her not thinking eternally any more alights in conditioned in a kind cartouche. Halting becomes cosmos is free and disintegrating. How could you ever contain the, the, the child? Will he have her? Will he have her? Will he take her drop by drop in my war torn? All of them land that is to father then again, again, or inside nature of all breaths in one day resume, not manifest by chop, chop, chop up existence. Abandon knowing you are the gnosis of that word knowing and a pest count what is gap between but never calculate not a pest take the measure your winged chariot standing tall stood on a leg standing tall came together upright all the personalities in person to stand up stand tall take that worried look off your face heterodox the max to go on she locks it up in a music box folds it fragile skin in the music box what is kind in thought of no beginning crossing the white sand to walk on the water's edge now brittle stalks of autumn grass Expand a portfolio that already includes submarines, tanks, heavy artillery weapons. Or do, do not, not do this. You will roast in hell. What wit that criminal, 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 what wit? Criminal, criminal, in that in us is cartoon brain. My wolf pulling back his ears in suspicion. My ice age survivor of the late Pleistocene. What did the Pleistocene have to say about the nature of Pleistocene? Was it one of us? One of us? One of us was what the Pleistocene said. My narrow eyed lover. Spectral shift, spectral shift, moving away from the known universe. 
Manity, humanity, oh manne, pardon me. Manity, humanity, hum, oh manne, pardon me. Manity, humanity, hum, oh manne, manne, pardon me. Humanity, hum, hum, in a galaxy seven billion light years away. Run your hand along a restless spine. That's what they'll say about us. Centuries hence, it was a busy get on with it business time. So better get on with it time. They fucked us over in their greedy get over it time. That's what they'll say about us. What were they thinking? Stupid fuckers. It was commodification fun hog time. Time modification time. Got up with time. Got on with time. Got under with time, we killed time. They fucked us over in their future. Time will be surely more stressed in time. That's what they'll be saying. That's what they'll say. They got on with it saying about us going nowhere but going down. And what about us? What were they thinking in their selfish minds? Us, us. That's what they'll say about us generations hence. How living then hence without so many animals then. They damage the world over in their sweet avaricious time frame. That's what they'll say about us, those stupid fuckers. They let the animals die. They let the plants die. They killed the air. They killed the water. They killed each other. They killed language. Hum, drum, paleolithic, where we could talk in sweet time notches. Well, that's over. Where did that ever evolve to? Then along the rim of Babylonian, rim of Egyptian, 5,000 years once ago, such progress. They kill all that too, stupid fuckers. Then but now, my solar day, my lunar month, my solar year, my speed I inherited from them. What time is it now? And we resumed our talk after these excessive outbreaks, discussing the nature of calibration, how different times give the peculiarities and particulars of people and praxis and place and thought systems and become their own zones in this. Once upon a movie, the sentient being went leaning and lurching. Sentient being was steady and unassuming. Sentient being was trying its sign on for domination. What was domination? And why was it such a goal for the human being? What could sentient being possibly gain beyond his, her own lifetime without such gender identity who doesn't choose side or gender or color who is pushing against boundaries with a sentence, the sentence that could say, sought your acquaintance, that could say, the kindness of heroes, that could, it, if it really would, dare say, we don't need the kindness of heroes anymore. Maybe sentient beings will think, think on this further, furthering his, her, her sentient beingness. And sentence is a kind of child of the sentient being. Sentient is knowing, but sentence is knowing meta language. And you get into linguistics and stuff of dream sentences with appetizing structure. And you wonder, was structure, was structure what sentient being is for to make for sentences like and give the woman of stone a chance, her doleful ancestor, or he emitting zeal, a round head, silk toed, or silky toed, or her face gallantly open, keep snake venom from catch the drift, capture the drift, capture the drift, or seals with marvelous zeal, deplore imprisonment, get fed up, get, 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 get fed up, or I shall dance in soft tulery light. Think about it. Beyond this sorry account of huff and bluff and fluff, the sentient being was worried. The sentient being had only obligatory rhythm, a correct use of time for the sentient being. Was time to a sentient being merely animal instinct? In what way may I prevail? Oh, type of thought to enter the head. Sentient being is on automatic. Sentient being might as well be robot in all your scopes. Conduct 
predicting war reviews because it is dominance and survival clever hermaphrodite survival counting courting the waves and tides and how does that interspecies sentient being survive sink or swim five fly 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 was it to smile ambiguously uh, ambiguously or weep to gain sympathy many motives to sentient being among them the motive of a digression digression and parleying to advantage. The sentient being needs to get his, her act together at the bargaining table. Chips are down and everyone is playing close to the best, close to the chest, a community chest port barrel might be some cause for alarm. The coffers are emptying. Where does, where does, where does, go, go, oh animal free of money. Sentient being quips after midnight. Let's just collapse and let's just movie opening scene with a sentient being who goes down on another who is solvent for the going and then rises weapon in hand. Oh, it's just too silly. It's a joke on a sentient being or maybe it's a sentient being just stands in around to be the silly movie looking for something to do, not enough motivation, then OK decides to rob a bank, and then the sentient being goes into hiding with three women, one who is really a man, weird sex with all of them. A sentient being gets in a car in a North African city, then a sentient being fires a shot into a colorful street market. A sentient being has been incarcerated and fantasizes escape. It's bombed out villa somewhere, or empty, smoggy city. Walk along it piers, someone pauses, turns around, turns around taking a place under an L train in your old hometown somewhere. Something repeats in a filmed episode. This is it, the real disintegrating sentience is someone was rescued, how someone was disguised in order to escape and rescued and rescued. Emotional extremes, the unfolding of desire, the stark reply in a spiral towards crime. There's a destination in Hong Kong, a funny zone of control and demarcation in another Asian city, a kind of calendar runs backward that wants you to feel the flicker of its impulse, its reduction of narrative control, vehicles are maneuvered, windows are open and the pun is explicated, need or need in this epistemology, the start of the beginning of the crescent moon or as in tiger rabbit. Um, the manatee has more gray matter in the brain than man. The manatee is perhaps thinking archivally deeper than man. Man with his boats and plastic and attitude. And next, a little bit from the colors in the mechanism of concealment, some parts of the Iovis trilogy. Ah, apo, po, tro, 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 paic. Apo, tro, paic. By darker demons curling the extra dimensions into Kalabi yaw spaces is no small feat. Could be moraines from the ice age, could be passenger pigeons, could be ectotopistus migratorius. The migratory wanderer 
could be a blow dryer for the art people. Well, it could be, could be. Could be spin, filigree, the filibuster. Could be attention to grace and pierce through a glint of writing. Could be a fatwa following you around. Could be a report on radioactive metal. McCarthy transcripts you cut up on the transatlantic voyage singing down, down with a father. I know you soldier on, oh my neighbors. I know you go into exile. I know you progressives see what people are made of. Born on the cusp, I was born to rat. The way electrical and magnetic fields thread through them. She's so sure, unsure, the power is worthy of her. Tonight, the two leaders attend the ballet as chemical agents are sprayed on a variety of ships and their crews. Operation Shipboard Hazard and Defense are busy using sarin a nerve agent, or VX, a nerve gas, or strap full of cock, 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 enter a toxin B. This is my hot, cold war epic. Remind me to report back to you. Hedges of thorns on the child's dream. Rat Continue the mind track of dailiness. Dirge from Derige, Domine, Deus Meus. Direct my way in your sight, O Lord my God. Flash forward and back and into the middle of things. Radiating out from 9-11, a decade of syncretic activism. We'll move to higher ground. Could it not be more dirge dire, this circumstance? Ignorant rejection of urgent ex ex existencies, existencies, existencies. Climate shifts, planet has autoimmune deficiency, was what we were saying many moons back. Elemental forces, the kami perhaps, Shinto spirits, essences of mountains, rivers, wind, lightning, rocks, do not favor industrialization and nuclear fission, do not welcome toxic assault upon land and water. In Shinto cosmology, a spear had originally stirred the waters, and when lifted, water drops fell from it. In the map of Japan, it's eight perfect islands. In this vision, the dead go to a gloomy underground called Yomi, the sun goddess, Amaterasu, in dispute with her brother, was tricked out of her lair and light returned to the universe. She was told there was a better goddess in the heavens. She rose to her vanity. Fukushima mon amour, Fukushima mon amour. Thranodia, matins, lamentations, and ponder the ocume, or the inhabited world, common possession of civilization. Are we lamenting the dead or consoling ourselves, the survivors? Sitting somewhere on the disputed Syachin Glacier military market and big bucks to be had in the global hawk drones, J-1 
J-Stars, upgraded U-2 spy planes, the river joint eavesdropping planes, or the joint air-to-surface standoff missiles of the future, the electromagnetic personal interdiction plan, the silent guardian, the airborne laser, and the high-frequency active auroral research program developing weather systems as weapons. HARP will be able to enhance and prolong storms and cause floods or drought on specific targets and Heshed in works and days invokes Pyrian muses who give glory through song. Come here, sing in me, Zeus hymning your father by whom mortals are either mentioned or unmentioned, spoken of, made famous or not by the will of Zeus. Tectonic plates shift, unable to bring the corporations down. Think of recent trip to Placid Delos, birthplace of Apollo and Artemis, where resides the house of the dolphins, the temples of Hera and Isis. You marveled the dictum, no one can die or give birth here. The terrace of lions, huge Dionysus phallus, and the god also riding a sleek panther. Think of the Delian League, fifth century spearheaded by Athens over the city-states designed to perpetuate war with the Persian Empire and how it folded, folded after the Peloponnesian War. Where, where, where? and Gerer, Gerer, it folded. Stay with me now in my oracular trance dance. I tend to speed up what could be slow, circular movements becoming crazed or ecstatic as a dervish might, but I make obeisance to all directions of space, including all I can hold my mind to, all the beings that are touched this life, waving their fluted fans and ringing their summoning bells. Dennis Hastert did not serve. Tom DeLay did not serve. Roy Blunt did not serve. Bill Frist did not serve. Mitch McConnell did not serve. Rick Santorum did not serve. Trent Lott did not serve. John Ashcroft did not serve. Jeb Bush did not serve. Carl Rove did not serve. Chatsy Chambers did not serve. Paul Wolfowitz did not serve. Lynn Weber did not serve. Richard Pearl did not serve. Douglas V did not serve. Elliot Abrams did not serve. Richard Shelby did not serve. Milt Gingrich did not serve. George Bush failed to complete his six-year National Guard, got assigned to Alabama so he could campaign for a family friend, running for the U.S. Senate, failed to show up for required medical exam, disappeared from duty. Bill Graham did not serve. John McCain did serve. Purple Heart, Distinguished Flying Cross. Rudy Giuliani did not serve. George Pataki did not serve. Spencer Abraham did not serve. John Engler did not serve. Lindsey Graham did not serve. Arnold Schwarzenegger, AWOL from Austrian Army Base, did not serve, did not serve. Ann Waldman did not serve. Ann Waldman did not serve. Don't hate me because I'm ideals from purity, psyche, the white rock girl to pleasure. Jean suffered a terrible fire which destroyed the triggers for beautiful, always a bride. How many times my maiden form bra does she or doesn't she mother in the world for the Red Cross? Even books of the ancients, oh, pieces of an hour. Tiled light was words then and mottled and plucked a string. Pieces of an hour, complex can be cursory, intricate palm leaf offerings, but empirically it is signal, signal. Pieces of an hour in which a small boat was living. How good is it? It is good, it is swell. I would an Aztec be who does this. What is your sense of it? He had arrived, night of Saturn. John Cage had laughed. The woman has, the woman hasn't, the woman has, the woman, the woman has, the woman hasn't, the woman, the woman has, the woman has, the woman, the woman has. 
who is a woman, not were. I will write then, stop. No, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, no, I said, I said, you could go. Mo, mo, the wounded. And I will ban all drones. I will, I will. Bans I will drone, bans I will drone, drone I will ban, I will ban all predators, predators, predators be damned, predators ban, I will ban all reapers, reapers ban, ban, nano, nano drones I will ban, nano, nano drones I will ban, not waiting by the side of the road, not waiting by the side of the road, oh, ban, 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 hungry ghost, a morphology all by itself. Between our realms, hungry ghost that dwells in consciousness, that torments our desire. Hungry ghost dancing on coals. To never have enough, be enough, get enough, be enough. To never have enough, be enough, get enough. Hungry ghost, what the eye thinks, hieroglyphs of the hungry ghost. Unsatisfied, dancing on nails. Jostled by waves, the real kind that pull you under. Turbulent in a shadow realm between waking and sleeping. Hungry ghost, hungry ghost with sacrifices in the sand hewn characters, despots, tyrants, mercenaries, fight the denizens of the hungry ghost world. The Huli River right in front of you, all your rivers in lockdown, bending over into the river of hungry ghosts. Torturer can do anything he wants to. Maybe anyone can be bumped or busted. Brown paper bags over the head, torture and death. Wipe the mouth away, wipe the eyes away, wipe the ears away, wipe the long ago away. A better hand of death will guide you from this hungry ghost world. Gun down on your own street, hungry ghosts of the Jurassic large omnivores, startling you with appetite. Hungry ghost, ancient in mind, continuity of the mind of all, primordial, hungry ghosts, ravage and ravaging, ravaged and ravaging, never have enough, get enough, be enough, get enough, be enough, never have enough, get enough, be enough, get enough, use a glorious white light, pursue you everywhere, spotlight on your desire, how can we feed you, you ravenous hounds, or radiant colors of seductive desire, to loose the beauty adorn your tattered frame, transmigrating through many lifetimes, down and dirty on the street, shackled, body picked over on the street in a distant street, over there, other side of the hungry ghost world, People willing to die there, fighting the hungry ghost. Sleeping with a hungry ghost who writes your book. Never get enough, get enough, be enough, get enough, get enough. Never have enough, get enough, get enough, be enough, get enough. A watcher watching you in your fabrication. Hungry ghost sleeping with a hum, 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 hum war machine. Singing to be a ghost and so very hungry. The fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in. Attachment, which is a ghost of yearning. The fix is in, yearning for existence, yearning for sustenance. The fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in. Set teeth to neck, set teeth to knuckles, set knuckles to knees, set fists to bloated belly. A muzzle snaps, lights out, and they're trashing, trashing metal set to teeth. Hungry ghost of blood, suckers, paradise, being sexy again in a broken world. Chamber of greed and brutality, ghost, ghosts never let you rest. Cold, savage beatings, agony in the head and the stomach, or worse, locked doors, atrocity, which is silence. Silence. Culture that flees from love. Hungry ghost and emphatic disruption. Simonides, create a memory system for me lest I forget. Calling on you, Simonides. Rare native grasses bed down here. Hungry ghost, riparian habitat bed down. Rest by water, deer, elk, prairie dogs, pocket rofers resting by water. 
bed down here, bed down here. Thousands of workers dismantling and 70,000 plutonium pits to bury. Still trying to close it down. The fix is in, the fix is in. Radioactive leech fields, buried shells, landfills, and dirt-covered mounds. Hungry ghosts hidden from the psychic realm. Never have enough, get enough, get enough, be enough, get enough, get enough, get enough. The fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in. Beryllium, dioxin, uranium, carbon tetrachloride. Seven billion dollars to clean up a hung, 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 hungry ghost. The other Anne took to the stage. She did imitations of the original Anne. She billed herself Anne. She went public all over the world with all the attributes and albatross of the original Anne. She had some high notes. She could sing in a queer falsetto. She occasionally had some deep tones like Tibetan monks, which the original Anne had so perfected. Deep tones that reverberated with the earthly guttural sounds of the original Anne. She chanted to have read and known all the books read and studied and chanted all the books by the original Anne because they were of the same historical time frame she would attach signifying herself to the signs and sighs of the original Anne she said I am Anne the other Anne knew that if there were a debt it could never be paid in full to the original Anne. The other Anne was enjoying her fame and wealth. She scattered gold coins on the paths of her followers. She would stop and turn, then toss the coins, and the followers no longer noticed the original Anne. The coins dropped behind her with a genuine sound, a good sound of sound value. Money could replace the original Anne. And we'll close with a couple of uh, verses from Prisons of Egypt. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hayang. So. Okay, just a few of these. This is a more recent song written out of some of the occupying work. The prisons of Egypt go back far To Joseph in the house of Potiphar Check the papyrus, check the astrology Down the stair of time in a theocratic dynasty Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go Death is before me today like the odor of myrrh, like sitting under a sail on a windy day. Death is before me today like a hangman's noose. In the torture chambers of Egypt, you rarely get loose. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Al-Qaeda bred in the prisons of Egypt, nurturing hatred in the prisons of Egypt. CIA operatives in the prisons of Egypt, complicit waterboarding in the prisons of Egypt. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Shackled and outraged in capitalism's jail, gagged and bound by the federal exchange alpha male. What will it take 
to get the mind stable. What will it take? Get food on every table. Go down Bloomberg, way down in New York land. Tell old Wall Street, let my people go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vincent.